they know a lot of them know I do comedy and the ones that don't, that's okay. I tried to keep in check that thing where you'd be like, you try to organically bring it up in yeah. front of everybody. I'm a, I'm a comedian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I was at this mic the other night. Oh, sorry. This is embarrassing. But I <laughs> Hello, I'm Cole Sauer, and welcome to Let's Be Best Friends, a podcast where I talk to people that I barely know and try and convince them to be my new best friends, because in times like these, who needs enemies? Today on the show, we have another incredibly funny Toronto comedian and the proud owner of the best Facebook URL I've ever seen, Kyle oh. Bergstresser. Oh, thank you. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. I don't get enough compliments on that. I think it is fantastic. Can you go into it a little bit? Yeah. So when I when I started uh, on Facebook, it was because I saw a girl at my school was on Facebook. OK. And I uh, yeah, I'll just get really honest off the top. I was like a, a ninth grader, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I liked her butt and her MySpace didn't have a lot of pictures of it. And I thought maybe the Facebook will. And uh, I'm not saying this is something to be proud of, but this is how ninth graders are. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to check that. So I made a Facebook with that. That was the sole purpose. I didn't think I was going to even use it. <laughs> and uh, all I had at that point was a MySpace. And on MySpace, when you enter your, you do a username and you tell the thing your name. Yeah. So I always did fake names in those things. Yeah. I always, anytime I had to enter my name, I was like, they don't need to know my real name. <laughs> so I made my name boob tit Phillips. Uh, really, I, you know, you enter the first word with no plan. So yeah, I was like, yeah. first name, uh, boob. Second name, still on kind of the boob train, so I went with tit. And then it was funny to me if, if I had just a normal <laughs> last normal name. last name. Yeah. And uh, so I set my Facebook in the ninth grade, and that's just kind of who I am now. Your boob, boob Phillips to your friends. Boob Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my, like, name on there anymore, but it's still my URL. And <laughs> Facebook just, like, made me change it one day. Really? They, like, really, they really wanted me to use my normal name. I remember okay, it was man. something where they were like, hey, just for security, we got to double check. Like, what was your name on here again? And it like, I can't remember, but they fucking they tricked me into it. <laughs> I remember it was it was there was something where they were like, we'll let you put the name you had. But like, just for clarification, what name is like on your license? I fell <laughs> just, for it like an just idiot. Just for shits and giggles. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, just, yeah. Just to be fun. Just trust me. It'll be fun. No, just do it. It'll be fun. It'll trust be me. fun, dude. I promise. Yeah. You're going to like it. I love, I love, I think about this all the time. The like internet security has changed so much since like the invention of Facebook. Cause when I was a yeah. kid, it was like, it was like, never give your real name out loud uh, online. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to strangers. Like, and now it's like the premise of this whole show is messaging people, my real name and trying to get strangers to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're trying to befriend strangers exclusively. <laughs> I've made an entire show based around all of the opposite things that my dad tried to teach me. Mm hmm. It makes me think I should assault you to teach you a lesson. <laughs> At least like harass and stalk you or something. I think you have something to learn here. Your show's a bad premise. Mm hmm. Teaching kids the wrong lesson. I'm going to teach am. them the right lesson I by am. hurting you. <laughs> uh, hurting me emotionally. In my soul. Yeah, however I can. Yeah. <laughs> Especially though we're trying to become best friends. We're, we're going to become so close by the end of this episode. Yes. Yeah, oh. I'm hoping to learn something about you that I can really hurt you with. That's the plan <laughs> on my end, really at least. You really cut me deep with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't you go in. That's how I go into every friendship. I, I'm going to learn a ton about you, and I'm either going to decide to use that to be your close friend or to really, really hurt you. Yeah, of course. Is there any other reason to be friends with somebody? No, exactly. No, there's not. So... Uh, to get, we're going to get into the show proper now that we're done talking about, uh, how much we failed our parents as people. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so uh, I usually like to start, I like to start with just get to know you questions. Larry King used to always say that there's five questions you have to answer in any interview, who, what, where, okay. when, and why. And because I'm a bad interviewer, I like getting them out of the way right at the beginning. So hit me, uh, for the first one, it's nice and easy. Who are you? Kyle, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Is that easy? That's a big question. I am Kyle. And uh, oh boy, I'm a grown boy. Oh God, I'm six foot one and a quarter. Ooh. I know that from when I went skiing once. Um, <laughs> Only once. 
Yeah. Well, I didn't measure myself after that because I liked it. And I was like, I don't want to get I don't want that to be a false reading. I can't remember if I was wearing shoes but I'm sticking with that. I'm a comedian. I'm, I guess, technically like a host, t- a TV personality now, Ooh. kind of technically. Uh, but it still doesn't feel like it because I <laughs> still think I'm really bad at it. <laughs> Um, I'm from a small town. I was always a little weird compared to everyone I knew a little teeny bit. And that has never changed. And I'm nice, but not as nice as I seem. (laughs) You did just talk about assaulting me. So yeah, I feel like I got a dark streak. (laughs) You got a, you got that small town mean streak. I'm with you. Mm Mm-hmm. I got just enough. I I uh, I feel like I'm just nice enough. If I was any nicer, I would meet me and I wouldn't believe it. You know, when you meet someone that's so nice that you're, like, you're like, I know you're mean. I don't trust everybody's me. mean a little bit. Yeah. If I can't see it, I know that you're a uh, Bill Cosby type and it's hiding <laughs> underneath. I, I always find it funny because I have that same instinct where I'll, sometimes I'll meet someone and they're really nice. And I'm just like, no, mm-hmm. especially in comedy. I, I'm like, no. Yeah. Can't be. I go out of my way. I'm probably, I probably fuck it up all the time too. I'm sure there's, I know there's plenty of people that are like that fucking Kyle guy. Not for me. What a dick. But I, I, yeah, I definitely just to like establish, like, it's not this sociopath calculated thing, but I, uh, I'll always, if there's, if there's a moment where somebody says something I don't really like, I, I, I don't do it incessantly, but I always try to grab one or two of those. There's plenty you let slide. You're like, I just want the momentum to keep going. And I don't care. That didn't bother me that much, but. I try to get a couple in there just to be like, I don't know. I feel like it says to them, you can also tell me if I'm annoying you. Yeah. I way rather, I hate that thing where I can see it on their face. Yeah. I can see, I know I'm annoying and I can see it on people's faces. And I'm like, just tell me, man. Just let me we'll know. It's so much better if you just tell me. Just tell me to fuck off and I fuck off. I'm good, man. Yeah. It's like, like that Foghorn Leghorn bit where you're just like, you want me to stop talking? I'll stop talking. If you don't tell me, I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> hey, that's exactly it. I'm very <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn with conversations. That can't be good. <laughs> My favorite part about Who Are You is that it's always, I, I find it's always the comedians who are like, oh, that's that's such a loaded question. And then they just mm-hmm. share all of these incredibly personal details about themselves. I'm, I'm very ha- happy about that. It's just like somebody handing you a blank piece of paper and saying, draw it. That's and you're like, well, what show. is it? That's oh, the whole no. show. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay. Maybe with number two then. So, so for what, I usually go with what do you do? So you said you're, uh, we, we've said that you're a comedian. Mm-hmm. So how long have you been in comedy? How long have I been comedy? I think, or did you say in comedy? In comedy, but you oh, can, I heard you can go with how long have you been comedy? <laughs> I've been comedy my whole life. It's uh, painted everything I've done. Yeah, I don't know how, uh, um, five years probably, somewhere like that. That's always weird to answer how long you've been doing it because everybody feels like, oh, I took like a little bit of a break. I haven't taken many breaks, but I mean, yeah, I haven't done stand up in uh, four months now, five months. I did a couple of Zoom shows. Those don't count. Yeah. Um, I did one like distanced open mic. I was like 18 and I just absolutely ate shit. It'd been so long that I didn't have like any of that confidence god i can't yeah. give a short answer can you i well you didn't have the you didn't have the mojo kind of thing right you didn't have yeah so i i i tried some premises and as if they didn't laugh at the very first line i just was like oh fuck i'm stupid i'm no good at this you guys <laughs> oh, hate no. me god damn it shit and i tried to like hide it by being like that's stupid right that's dumb and the whole crowd's like what's dumb you said like two words yeah like oh, how are you guys doing tonight no never mind that's you're probably doing <laughs> how many people have asked you that tonight i'm the worst right <laughs> Why are you my, looking at me like that? Hi, my name's Kyle. Fucking oh, problem? Fucking stupid, man. <laughs> you don't care. The host already said my name. God damn it. God damn it. Uh, but yeah, like five years. Uh, five years, I'll say. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you said you're from a small town. Yeah. So, so did you start comedy, like small town comedy, and then just kind of keep going and going and get to Toronto? Or how does that go? No, so I... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's why it's a weird question to answer because, like, okay, so, like, I remember in high school, like, every presentation was, like, an opportunity to try to be the funny guy. Yeah. I got kicked out of class just a whole ton Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for that kind of thing. I was never, like, 
yeah, I was never like really, really mean and vindictive, but I was always in trouble for something. It was just about getting reactions out of people. And then I, I remember some friends being like, you should try comedy and not in the sense of like, oh, you're so funny. You have to do it. It yeah. was like, you're funny. And also clearly you need something else like yeah. this. <laughs> you need a you're relief. You're putting out so much. <laughs> we can't, we can't give you what you're looking for, man. <laughs> um, but it was years before I started. I just, I was always like, I'm that funny guy from my town and I'll be funny on like Facebook. And I, I was trying to even be funny on MySpace back in, in the day. I'm 31, by the way. So back I got in the some good old references. Days. There you go. Uh, and I, uh, so then I got just really dumped really hard when I was like 24. And I'd been working just labor jobs for a while. Tried being on the radio and I hated it. Yeah. Uh, again, always trying to find these shortcuts. It's like I knew I wanted to do comedy. I'll just be funny online. I'll just mm. be funny at school. I'll just be funny at work. Oh, maybe I'll go try to be funny for a living but i don't know if you've ever heard the radio you can't actually be funny on there no it's awful. i know some very funny people that are on the radio and they just can't they can't there's no time to be funny you have like yeah, no. 45 seconds it's so uh i hated that and then eventually after just getting dumped super hard i had the motivation that i wanted to like prove to her that i was okay <laughs> and that just like, i'm, I'm actually doing better because of this breakup i'm gonna be a stand-up comedian karen yeah, i'm fine that, That'll really prove to you that I got my <laughs> shit together. Um, yeah. So then I finally like, and then even then I decided I'm going to do it. And mm -hmm. it took me like a year and a half, two years before I actually first did it. I yeah. had like a bunch of bits written and uh, I just kept, I wouldn't even say I pussied out. I just didn't even know like how to start. Yeah. So I was living, I was living from, I moved from my small town to Winnipeg, Manitoba. Ooh, nice. And after I'd been there for about two years, I finally, I just had a friend who said she was going, she had started dating a comedian. She said she was going to an open mic. So I was mm. like, shit, okay, I'm coming with, I'm yeah, going to try it. I'm going to try it. Yeah. And it went all right. And actually my first three sets went really well. Nice. And then I got cocky and started eating shit for yeah. a while. Then yep. I, I completely forgot what I needed to do because I was like, oh, it's just in me. I can just go up there and just fuck around. I'm just rip. a savant. Oof. Yes. That was what I thought. And then, uh, then I bombed so hard I cried, and then I think that's when I really started. Yeah. I think that's – it's like I've been kind of performing my whole life, but after I bombed so hard I cried for the first time and kept doing it, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that's when I really started. Yeah, that's that's when you know. That's the fight or flight of it where you're kind of yes. like where that happens and you're like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going, I think. Yes. Yeah, the bucket list people that aren't going to go past that, the yeah. people who just kind of wanted a bit of validation – it's that's when you know you kind of need this yeah because i was once i started i didn't care like that sucked but my whole plan was like i gotta find a way to not have that happen again yeah you know because it's obviously going to keep going it's so true it's it's a very like crossroads moment where it's like it's either you you go well like it was fun while it lasted but i i can't fucking handle that again or it's yeah yeah or it's that was awful let's never do that again yes yeah 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 exactly and it was uh it was fully that it was, I actually, I kind of, I, so my very first set was about tampons for some reason. Nice. Uh, I really thought that's how I should kind of introduce myself to that whole scene. Yes. This, <laughs> As, this white dude talks about tampons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. It was, I still shouldn't have done it, but I'll give myself credit that it was from a decently progressive angle. Okay. Just saying that like, I, <laughs> I was just basically saying I couldn't handle having a vagina. Like I wouldn't take care of it properly. <laughs> that was my way of being really progressive by being like, I really admire the way women's vaginas aren't filthy all the time. <laughs> that was the gist of it. Women, you don't uh, smell? Good on you. Good yeah, one. Yeah. Good one, guys. Kill um, him. I remember there was something about how I would stuff change up there too. I just <laughs> I couldn't be trusted with it. And then I went and tried to do kind of the same bit again but with like no prep time. Oh, and I had so many friends that came out and watched. Oh, and I no. just, I leaned way too much into, I remember I talked about period blood for a long time. Yeah. I was like, let's just riff on period blood for a while. And I started hearing audible like, oohs from the crowd, totally justified. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't acknowledge to myself that I had bombed mm. at that point. And then a little while later, I tried to do a bit about how um, I think racism probably look at that. I was like oh, a no. couple weeks in trying to tackle all these big oh, no. issues. I was a big Louis fan. So I was like, ah. comedy is taking something you should never talk about and making it work. Yeah. 
uh just like something that fucking idiots do a lot of people are still doing very publicly now yeah little little baby two weekend kyle was like i am george carlin the second yeah i'm gonna tackle racism i remember the <laughs> metaphor was that i think racism i i did say like i probably can't understand how it feels but it's probably like uh sometimes i go into a store wearing flip-flops and i feel like they don't take me seriously <laughs> like they don't think i'm gonna have money for stuff i thought i was like oh that's so funny and i i thought of it on my way up to the stage it oh, wasn't like God i had something it. written i know it's so stupid and it wasn't a hot crowd that night winnipeg's pretty good for hot crowds but okay. every now and then they're not so i had been spoiled and it was a weak crowd and i had a weak set and it was touchy so you yeah. gotta really nail it to make them feel confident in you and uh, they didn't laugh when I said that first thing. And I was like, what the hell? And then I was like, oh, this guy, what the hell is your problem? You just been fucking, I was like calling him out because he'd been stone faced all night. Yeah. And I was like, this fucking guy sucks. And then the whole crowd was like, well, that's a little mean. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what do you people need? I started to be like, what do you need? And then I, I was going to be like, let's get them some Red Bull. But I was really, I was kind of mad. So I was like yelling at the waitress. I was like, miss, waitress, waitress, look here. I think I like snapped at her or oh something. My God. Just absolutely crumbling. And I was like, can we get some people some Red Bull? And I was like, oh, they don't like it. But I was looking at the other comedians thinking they'd be like, oh yeah, I've been there. But they were all like, oh, gross. Yeah. What's he doing? <laughs> and then I, uh, I just pulled the ripcord, didn't finish. I think I was on there for like two minutes. And then I went to the back bar and just started crying. I went to the bathroom, oh cried for a God. second, and then I went to the back bar. And then a comedian, he came and talked to me for like 30 seconds. And then he went, all right, I'm, uh, I'm going to quit trying to make you feel better. That was embarrassing. <laughs> he, he walked away and I was Holy like, Holy shit. This is going to be hard. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, rough and tough. That yeah, makes dog. me feel so much better about my monumental bombing. Damn. Yeah, what was yours? Oh my God. It's not even that bad. It was literally just like, I went to a show and no one laughed and I felt like shit about it. Like, <laughs> so I left, like, it wasn't even like, Boy. it's such a normal bombing story. It was like, I had been doing comedy for like a month. I was on a buddy show and it was yeah. like, just trying to like test out some new shit. Nobody laughed. Like no one was laughing all night. And I was like third or fourth up. And I was like, Oh, this is going to be hard. And I go up, no one laughs. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm awful, unfunny. I'm gonna go home. It was the same thing. I was like, it's like I'm gonna walk to the subway, uh, listen to the set yeah. again, and and realize that I'm a shitty, awful human being. Sick. You Sick listen to it again. Yeah. Damn. I, I do that That's every time. Commitment. I, I shit. I, I I can't even listen to my good sets. No, I, I have to every now and then. But man, good God. I have to. It comes from I went to school for broadcasting, and one of the number one things that they me teach me too. You, cool. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I was on the radio for like a year. I went to broadcasting school in Winnipeg. Oh, look at you. Are you from Winnipeg? Is Or you're from, you said small Right town, around so Winnipeg. Right around, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so, so one of the main things they teach you is like, just listen to your voice until you stop hating it. And so when I was yes. in comedy, I was like, I'm just going to keep listening to it until I can pick apart what isn't working and what isn't funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. I did get to the point where I don't hate the sound of my voice, but mm -hmm. I hate what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes also the sound of my voice. It's just, it's so, have you heard that Ira Glass quote about how the hardest thing about being creative is it takes so long for your actual voice to match your like critiques. Like yeah. you have a mind for what you like, but it takes so long for you to actually do something that's like up to par with what you're looking for in yeah. art. And uh, I don't think I'll ever get there. I feel like I'm never going to get to the point where I'm like, now I'm finally doing it as well as I'd like to be. I think that's a good thing though. I always think about that where I'm like, I'm like, I, again, I think every artist, comedian, whatever, always has like a very high opinion of, of what they want to sound like. They know yes. where they want to be. But I feel like when you hit that is when you just kind of like, well, where do you go from there? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You want enough of that, that you're like, cause there's a lot of uh, pretty weak comedians that are very confident. Right. And, or at least present as very confident. And you do need to have enough confidence to like say, you know, I deserve to be on this show and I deserve to have and start like asking for stuff. Yeah. And like, I just kind of, I fake that. I just go like, I know I need to do that. So I send emails and I just say, Hey, I'd like to, and I have some credits that I can sort of work with now yeah. and I, I'll do that. But like, good God, man. I, uh, if they really, if they put me on a lie detector, like, do you think you deserve to be on this show? I'd be like, well, if these <laughs> That's a loaded question, people man. are busy then yes. I'm going to need a huge list of all the, if they're all busy, then yeah, then I think I do. If you can't get anyone else, man, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I think everyone, 
should do that though. Like I think I think very much, especially show business, show business as it is, is like it's so much faking confidence to get there. Like when I first started, I I remember I was using four time uh, radio award nominated uh, host. <laughs> Work Cole with what Sauer. you can, Doug. Yeah. I was nominated for, like, college radio awards that I never won. And yeah. I, <laughs> I remember the first show I did that on, and they were, like, going through all the... They were, like, reading off everyone's credits and shit just to be like, okay, we want to make sure we're getting everyone's name right, everyone's credits, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Went to Humber, blah, blah, blah. You know, Second City, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Four-time nominated, and I was like, oh, man, I do sound like an asshole. Shit, I got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the first time I uh, I applied to a comedy festival, they wanted, like, a comedy resume, and I was like, oh, fuck, there's nothing on there. I have nothing. <laughs> so I the only credits I had was I had one joke of the night at open mics a couple of times, nice. eh? and I won nice. the, uh, the, the drama award in grade 12 in high school, and I was like, and that's it. That is all I got. Oh, and then I mentioned that I went to broadcasting school. Like, there just like, they let me go there. So yeah. that says something. Right? They allowed me in the door. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> Killing mm-hmm. it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you said you started about five years ago for when. Yeah. when did, so when, um, do you do comedy full time now? Like, obviously outside of Rona, outside of Big Rona? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant. I thought you thought I worked at Rona, the home, no, the home. cheapo style place. Uh, yeah, I no, no, no. I, I was proud of myself. I made man in Canada to get to the point where you're like doing it for a living mm-hmm. is uh, that is a long way out for everybody. Yeah, I um, I made enough money at comedy uh, that I qualified for Serb because of it. Nice. At, hey, that's something. Uh, yeah. So since. Uh, since the like March, technically I've been doing it full time. There you go. <laughs> I haven't done any comedy, You're but because laid of off. comedy, yeah, I've been getting two two grand a month, so that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, no, I'm a long ways away. I think the best year I've ever had was last year, and I made somewhere from like ten to twelve grand, which is like wow, that's great. That, yeah. Holy shit. But uh, not even close. Yeah. Not even close to doing it for a living. Yeah. It sounds very impressive until you realize that it's like only a grand a month, which is still huge for, for independent awesome. comedy. Like that's yeah, yeah. amazing. But yeah. And the thing that people don't understand even outside of that is that there was several months where I made $0 or yeah. like $25. Yeah. And then you just have, you have two great months and then the rest of it's like kind of nothing. Like I had like, November, December, January were really good. And then I had that TV show and that was what did it. Mm-hmm. The The rest of the year was fucking nothing. <laughs> so it's just a goal. You're like, how do I make every month like November, December, January? Yeah. You're like, well, that was all holiday parties and Christmas that like you can't. Yeah. It's a uh, fuck, man. I think that's the thing, though, right? It's, it's like any any I feel like any entertainment or art industry has its periods. Like I used to do weddings and it was like, you know, fuck, spring rough. to summer fucking rolling in money you could pay your rent for the rest of your life and then it's like you might get one in the winter maybe like two or three in the fall but otherwise you're like knocking on doors trying to get money like (laughs) dude go back to doing weddings and then find a way into some christmas parties and you're golden yeah no i know getting any any kind of like anytime you can get into any kind of like corporate or like uh like parties and holidays and shit like that Ding, yeah, ding, then ding, you're ding, good. Ding, 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 ding. How long have you been doing comedy, though? How long? You, like, basically Not long. had kind of just gotten started before the yeah. pandemic happened, right? Uh, I think if we if we count the, the pandemic, it's been, like, a year. If we don't count it, it, like, I think I did it for, like, six months. Yeah. Not long. I wouldn't I wouldn't go to, maybe, I wouldn't go to corporate parties quite yet. Those no. are the pretty much the hardest gig you're ever going to get. <laughs> and if you eat shit they're going to maybe be like, ah, maybe comedy isn't for us and just never get a comedian. Again. Yeah, no. Those are a risk. Yeah. I, uh, I, I do, uh, I, I do, uh, I record these things. I'm, I, I, I went to You're the production aware, yeah. side and I was like, <laughs> I know oh, I I'm not that funny, but I can maybe get you a funny person and then I can record sure, them sure. being funny. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I thought you were emceeing wedding because that's, that's rough. No, fuck that. <laughs> I've seen so many people just eat absolute shit. I'm seeing a wedding. No, sir. Could not handle that. I've done two and one went good. And the other honestly didn't go bad, but parts of it went bad. Yeah. <laughs> I lot like big chunks of it went bad. Oh, boy, I got a lot of bombing stories. We don't have to get into all of them. <laughs> 
So I've done well a lot of times too. <laughs> I'm, I'm funny, I swear to God. I swear to God. It was just that's not interesting. Yeah, man. Right? Imagine somebody just went off and went, "Oh, I remember this one great set." Okay, I started with the joke about my wife. And then I started <laughs> with the joke about my wife's weight, and then I went into the joke about my annoying wife and the way she talks, and it killed. Construction that's, company Christmas party. Mm. Mm, yes, sir. That's my goal. That's that's that's. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to all the comedians I actually like talking to, so I can eventually get to the one where he's like, I started with this joke about hitting my wife. It killed. It was the best <laughs> joke ever. Woo. I uh, wish I was making that up. I've seen jokes like that work more than once. Oh, yeah. It's it's the curse. The other the curse of starting is that you're going to all these open mics where you're like, I think I have a funny bit. And then one guy kills with a joke about just being a racist. And then you mm -hmm. go up and try and tell a bit and it bombs and you're like, oh man, maybe I should just be a racist. Like shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I left a mic once because there was like seven people left and uh, a comedian went on stage and told a joke about how you can't talk to women anymore because of that new hashtag. And uh, the place erupted, not like even like it was so funny, but like, God, this guy's such a fucking truth teller. Yeah. Like they were so psyched Visionary. about it. Yeah, and I was like stewing for a couple of minutes trying to think of what I could say to really like, fucking take it to him. And I was like, "There's, I'm not going to say anything. They're going to hate it. Yeah. I'm going to hate how it makes me feel. It's going to like these same people that laughed at that aren't going to care what I have to say. Yeah. So I was just like, never mind. I got to just go. <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm done. I'm done with today. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, comedy sucks, man. Yeah. Oh, I miss it so much. Right? It's such, a, it's, such a, it's such an abusive relationship, man. It's literally like, it's so awful for your self-esteem, but also it's the thing that your ego is pinned to. Like, Yeah, it it, uh, it it backhands you in the face and then it buys you a nice bracelet. So you, <laughs> <laughs> you keep coming back. We're stupid. So, so on that same train of thought, the last question is always why, and I have it as why do you do the thing that you do, which is very nebulous. So what is it about comedy do you think that does keep you coming back that made you go on you had that fork in the road you had that moment where you could have quit and just been the funny guy on facebook but instead you were like no i'm just gonna like get better and keep doing it uh um i think i just really knew i needed it but was always too scared mm -hmm. uh, i knew that's what i was going for when i was doing like even radio stuff like mm -hmm. i i would fuck around so much in school uh, with my friends and like nothing we ever really liked got graded well mm -hmm. and it always got cut down to the point where it wasn't what I wanted anymore mm -hmm. and it always uh so then when I finally did it I was like fuck I can go up there and say whatever I want and like my first set something just happened I uh I don't know something happened where I I had a whole set in mind and then I was watching people and it was it's funny because it was a total rookie mistake I was yeah. like Oh, no, my set's about a guy at my work and that guy's talking about uh, this rock band. He was like, oh, I went to a concert once. And I was like, I don't have anything about a concert. And I was like panicking. <laughs> I was like, they're going to hate me. Uh, and then the next person was talking about something else. And I was like, I don't have anything about BMX bikes either. I don't know what. So then I like went to the bathroom and panicked. And I remembered a bit that felt really solid. And it was that <laughs> the vaginas tampons bit. Uh, but man, I remember it just like worked for me all of a sudden. I went up, I went up with a riff because I had gone over the set really hard just before I went up. It's like, you shouldn't always do that. But that sort of was a trick where it was like fresh in my mind. It was like whatever. And uh, I'm sure if I watched the video, I'd be like, oh, it's so bad. But for <laughs> a first set, I... I I felt like, holy shit, I'm good at this. I could do this. Yeah. So it didn't matter when I did bad. I was like, okay, but I've done good. I know I can yeah. do good again. And I knew that that was what I'd always wanted. I just wasn't admitting to myself how scared I was to do it. Mm -hmm. So like once I'd broken through it, it was just like, yeah, there was just no going back kind of. That feels, I don't like that answer. It feels really mm -hmm. generic, but I think that's true. <laughs> I mean, but it's true though. And it's true to yourself, right? It's just, it's, it's, it's something that you love doing that you always wanted to love doing. And you just finally kind of, we're honest with yourself, basically. Yeah, I was always, well, it's funny because we're going to be watching mm. uh, The Office, but mm. I uh, I was always really just Michael Scotting situations. Like, just, his his worst quality, right, is that he, he, uh, he never tries to adapt to a situation. Mm. And I still do that sometimes. Like, I always think I have the funniest thing to say and I have the best kind of, like, energy to bring to a situation, even if it's, I'm at a party and they've all been there for hours and I just showed up. It's like, it's Kyle time it's now. Kyle's here, baby. Yeah. 
stop what you're talking about. I'm in charge now. And uh, I try to keep that in check. But like before I did comedy, it was not in check at all. Right. And like, thank God I went to a small town school. So people really got to know me. So like people, they did actually let me do that. Like I could come into a party and make it Kyle time. And I know people were a little annoyed, but they're always like, this guy's fucking great, man. Like yeah. I had a lot of confidence from my small town. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that, so I, I was just like, oh, holy shit, this is that. But I don't have to like force it to happen. I don't have to wait till the weekend and make sure the right people are at the party and hope I get invited and yeah. all the right shit happens. It was just like guaranteed several nights a week whole room of people just sitting and staring at me it was like Mwah, <laughs> this is all okay. i ever wanted let's go yeah yeah <laughs> holy hell it is great so out of curiosity like was it just the release of comedy that got you to a point where you could keep that in check because i think that's a problem for a lot of people who who are who are funny or who are creative where they just kind of kind of get too caught up in themselves was it the release uh, of comedy that did that or was it just getting older like Definitely a little of both. Definitely a little of uh, you do that, that uh, that 18 to 25 period is kind of you going from thinking, you know, everything you have all the confidence in the world and you think you really get it to like mm. slowly realizing how much you don't get and necessarily losing confidence kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah and you just sort of learn a lot through that mm. and you realize like, oh, maybe there's a lot of stuff I had figured out that I should look back on. And I was like, there's probably a lot of times where I thought I was right, that I was wrong, going back on other situations where we're like realizing I was a little much there. And yeah. Yeah. You just, you just observe yourself in hindsight a lot. Um, so there's that, but it was also honestly just the like confidence of knowing I can do that. Mm -hmm. So then when I'm at a party, I didn't have this like bubbling up feeling of like everyone here needs to know I'm the fucking funniest. Yeah. Like it, uh, I was like, they know a lot of them know I do comedy and the ones that don't, that's okay. I tried to keep in check that thing where you'd be like, you try to organically bring it up in yeah. front of everybody. I'm a, I'm a comedian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well I was at this mic the other night. Oh, sorry. This is embarrassing. But I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't, I tried to not, I don't think I ever did that. I hope I didn't. Um, and then I just, yeah, I didn't have that incessant need to like prove as much at least yeah. to everybody. But then if somebody else is getting a lot of laughs, you'd be like, mm. you that, this motherfucker. <laughs> He's be. never bombed at a mic. He hasn't earned it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what you do. You go up to him and you're just like, oh, wow, you're funny, man. You should try comedy. <laughs> try the real thing. Hey, man, you should. Yeah. Uh, I run this mic. You should come by. <laughs> Set them up uh, for failure. That would be the kill meanest you. thing ever. Holy <laughs> shit. Get them in a room full of comedians and just be like, you should tell jokes here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, and bring them up really badly too. Yeah, just just be like, I'm just gonna. We're friends. I'm just gonna bring you up really loosely. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this next guy, he trusts me. He was telling me this story about his sister the other day. And like, <laughs> I know he's got a totally different set. And on the way up, I'm like, just trust me. Just trust me. Do that. It'll work. Just do that. Do the sister thing. Really what set sister up. thing? Yeah. Just something. <laughs> something about your sister. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> we've gotten through our five questions. We've gotten through our intro. Uh, so. Here on Let's Be Best Friends, I always ask the guests beforehand what they would like to do while we talk, because I think that's the most organic way to become best friends. And you sure. chose you chose uh, watching an episode of The Office, which I think is so perfect. Yeah, it's a very universal show. Huh? Everybody right? loves it. It's uh, just talking yesterday uh, <clears throat> with my girlfriend about like it's it's like the perfect, it kind of includes every type of person you're mostly going to run into, mm -hmm. at least like in a situation, like every, every group situation, actually when you're friends with comedians, it sort of fucks it all up, but most <laughs> group situations, they have like a Michael and they have a Jim and they have a Dwight and they have an Angela and whatever. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that's why it works for everybody is everybody was looking for that kind of, and everybody's looking for this release of just like, Oh, I can like be annoyed by a lot of people at my work and not get super depressed about it. I can yeah. just pretend to do like a gym look at the camera and be like, they're so annoying, aren't they? It let a lot of people feel superior whether they yeah. should or not. Uh huh. Well, I, was, I, I uh, yeah. I was going to say, like, everyone, everyone who's ever, even if you haven't worked in like an office, anyone who's worked a job has, yeah. has met people like that who are just like weird and, and stubborn and have these weird quirks and things like that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And who really abuse anytime you give them a little bit, they just like take way too much. They, yeah. you, you feel bad for them periodically and you're like, maybe I should be their friend. And then as soon as you try, you're like, no, this is why we're not friends, man. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you. All right. Fuck. I don't like you. God, Jesus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I also do think though, that everybody, every single person watching the show thinks they're Jim and very yes. few of them are Jim. Yes. A lot of them are Michaels and they don't, they don't know it. And I think I'm a little of both. I'm, I'm an, I am an Andy. I have been described as an Andy. And <laughs> oh, I am. Oh no, yeah. You really are. I'm comfortable with it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who's in the background just like, like, that's just me. I'm just here to support my friends in a kind of annoying way. And yeah. that's just it. Every once in a while I say something kind of funny and I just go off the fucking deep end. Like that's it. Just yeah. Happens. Yeah. You really goofball it up. Do you have a temper? I could see you having a temper. Can you just lose it? Um, I, I, I do. But I have a temper over, I think the way that I like control it is I have a temper over very small, stupid things. Like I have awful road rage where I'll like fucking stick my head out the window and be like, what the fuck is wrong with? Like, I have awful road rage and like little stupid arguments I'll get really into. Like, it'll be like Godzilla versus King Kong. And it's like, what are you a fucking idiot? Of course Godzilla wins. What's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. But then like. Yeah, you siphon it off. You kind of, you misdirect it from something else. Have you ever, um. You ever accidentally called someone mom in traffic? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's never bubbled over like that? Okay. It will. Your head it will. for sure. It yeah. will. That's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, shit. It will. Mm-hmm. Someday. Definitely. What about you? Do you, do you have a temper? Are you? I, I feel like you're a very chill person who would just get, like, annoyed. Like, I feel like you don't have, like, a temper. Uh... It's, it's like it's inside. I get really mad about, I'm kind of the same way. I get really mad at over like video games. Like yeah. I, uh, I like to play racing games and I like to play them over and over and over and get really good at like the one it's like, I want it to go perfect. And yeah. I am sure I'm deflecting something, but it's just like, I want to get really good at this one thing. And if I don't do as good as I wanted to, I get really mad. When I was a, like a teenager, mm. I used to like we had a baseball bat in my basement Oh no! and I would like hit the walls. We had a punching bag. I'd usually hit that, but then I'd be like, no, I want to like break some, I don't want to yeah. hit something that's made to be hit. I'd like lose my mind. Cause I wanted to be, uh, the best online virtual dirt bike racer. I could be. <laughs> I'll get mad about that. I'll get really mad about like, uh, differences of opinion with like comedy. Mm. Um, I really believe that I have all of the right ideas about what movies are good, what music is good, what comedians are good. And anyone who disagrees, especially if I feel like I do a really good job explaining my reasons and they don't agree, uh, I'm working on it. I know it's the worst quality, but it (laughs) it does just make it. It's probably the thing that makes me the most mad. And uh, I don't know if I'd want to be friends with someone who did that to me, but it is... It's in me, whether it I like it or things. not. You can only have one of those person in any given friend group. Like you can't, you can't have a friend group yeah. with two of those people because they're always going to be arguing about whatever yeah. the new thing is to argue about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's never going to be, yeah, there will never be any peace, and there'll never be any agreement because there will, uh, there will never be peace. Yes, because they're both wrong. They're because <laughs> the answer is it's subjective. Yeah, and shut up and yeah. like, yeah. Any any piece of media that people like is a total reflection of like every thing that's happened to them for their whole life and their whole genetic makeup like it's Mm -hmm. but still i'm like yeah you say that but uh the office is one of the best shows it's hard right it's like there's a million you have to think about it like there's a million different factors as to why this person likes this song that you don't like but Mm -hmm. like it's so hard to think about that at the moment because you're just like no it doesn't it doesn't fucking sound good like it's a bad song like well and i really believe i see what they see in it but they don't see what i think is wrong with it uh, i see why you like it but you're not seeing why I think it's bad. It's like, I've tried so hard to ruin this thing for somebody. It's making them happy. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where my temper comes out. I I get that. I get that. But on the other end, I get really passionate. Like I could cry watching the office and not at like the sad parts, just 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 at, or like old Simpsons, just like, Mm. it's so good. Like I do actually, it goes the other way when I see something I really like, like a great song or a good show. That's uh, that's where I deflect my happy emotions. Too. <laughs> you watch season two of The Simpsons, you're just like, fuck yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. If I ever like beat a disease or something, I wouldn't react, but I'd go home and watch The Simpsons. And like, <laughs> you just, yes, I made yes. It. I could Things do it. are right in the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start up. We're on, uh, what was season two, episode 11? Yeah, I was thinking that's a good one. Booze yeah. Cruise. Booze Cruise. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm ready when you are. If you want to do it, give us like a count in. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do uh, three, two, one, play. Okay. Three, two, one, play. Oh, no. Shit. There's a, there's a parent lock on mine. There's Damn. a parent lock. No. Yeah, it's not my account. Okay, how many seconds in are you? I, I went back to zero. I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to go back to zero as well. Okay, uh, three, two, one, play. Sick. Jim's eating Doritos. Not the sure is. God bless Dwight's you. walking in. Uh-oh, Dwight. You've been pranked, my man. <laughs> Jim's a little mean to Dwight. Are you a, are you a captions man or a not captions man out of curiosity? No captions. You're a captions Especially man? for comedy. No, 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 no. No captions. Really? Correct. It telegraphs all the jokes. It's all I can focus on. Okay. And I'm not even hearing the show in the characters' voices anymore. I'm just reading uh, the words. So. No. Okay. Interesting. I'm I'm a captions guy, honestly, primarily because I'm just like, I ain't got I ain't got sound in my ears anymore. I'm. Just, <laughs> Do you I really listen, you have super bad hearing? I got awful hearing, man. I listened to so much loud music when I was a kid, and like I don't know how much of that's actually real and how much of it's like a placebo. Like I played a lot of sports, I got hit in the head a lot. Like I just got bad hearing, man. Could be a focus thing too. Yeah, a little of both. Yeah, I also got I, uh, wicked bad ADD. So yeah. Oh, me too, baby. Me too. I was wondering with us doing this, speaking of like focus, I certain people this would make them so mad. Like for the for the we're watching their favorite show and we're yeah. missing all the good parts because we're going to be talking over it the yeah. whole time. But that's yeah. the thing is that it's funny. I think it's just like there's like different brands of ADD because like I think that's great. Like I'm the kind of person who listens to like commentary on DVDs and I like what listen to like riff tracks and Mr. Science mm. 2000 and all that shit because I'm just like I'm down to just listen to someone funny say funny shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although I guess that means that I just have a fucking massive ego because I was like, I can do that. Yes, exactly. I yeah. will make The Office funnier. <laughs> yes, you. The, the Office is pretty good, but you know what it's missing? Me talking the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So that he can have us wrap Yeah. Oh, this was the first show I ever watched where I went, I love this show. I love how it does everything. But I think I could add a couple jokes to every episode. I was always like, I wish I could be in the room. I couldn't do almost any of it. 95% of it is done. And then I want to do the rest of the 5%. Yeah, I just want to come in and couple. slide in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give that little I'm not saying I actually could, but I do feel that way. <laughs> Did you watch The Office when it was like new? Or, or were you? No, I fought it for a while. I was okay. one of those real pretentious, the British one's better okay. types. And now I'm like, can't they both be good? Yeah. And different. <laughs> and this show's way more watchable. I'm also rewatching the British one right now. And it's, uh, man, it's funny. And I love it. I love watching it and being like, how can you make a show feel this real? And yes. like, how can you have that many unlikable characters <laughs> in one show? But at the same time, like, good God, I do not blame anyone for being like, I can't watch that show. Yeah. It's rough. It's very like it's funny because it's it's just the different kinds of humor, right? The American one is this very like ambiently funny, like quippy kind of thing, so you can have it in the background and do something else. Whereas the British one is very like intentional, like all the characters are very intentionally written to just be these fucking intensely unlikable human beings. Yeah, and there's absolutely no jokes. There's just long, uncomfortable moments where yeah. all the humor is like, "Stop it! Why won't you stop it? You're yeah. still talking. You have to stop." It's very, it's very British. Like it's very dry, and you're just like, "Oh, please get yeah. me! Like, do something funny, please." Yeah, yeah. And there are moments. Yeah. There's so many moments, but good God, this show is such a. It's so much nicer. It's just nice. <laughs> yeah. I watch it and I feel good. It's like a comfort food kind of thing, and it's yeah. got a lot of the the elements. They still do a great job of like, of writing fully realized characters and making them funny purely because of the characters, but uh, without making you feel like shit for the whole episode. I think that's a that's. <laughs> That's admirable. <laughs> it is. It honestly, it is admirable because I feel like that's a very like thin line to walk on, right? Like they because they do have those moments where there's these very tense, like like that where you're like, oh, someone throw a pie. Like I need I need to laugh yes. at something. But then there's also moments where it's just like joke, 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 joke. Like yes, exactly. There's full episodes that nothing really gets super uncomfortable the whole time, mm -hmm. but they uh, they always make sure to get that in there every now and then. Yeah. But what they do better on this one is like. Ricky Gervais, like David Brent, is purely unlikable. He has no redeeming qualities. 
he's never he's never nice to people even for a second he's he's uh the worst all the way through and and michael they they don't puss out and make him just like a total sweetie pie and they there's you'll go three four episodes without him doing anything likable but they make sure every now and then they're just kind of thinking they're like by now i'd be starting to hate this guy let's add a little something nice so that people don't totally zone out of the show well, I think it makes it very human, right? Because it's like, because again, we've all met those people where it's like, it's that boss that you hate, but then every once in a while they do something that's like kind of funny or something that yeah. kind of helps you out, and you're like, yeah, fair enough, man, fair enough, okay, like, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess you're not the worst. You're not whatever. the fucking worst boss ever. Whatever. Back to work. I, like, I used to work with a guy that I just truly couldn't stand, and I would feel really bad all the time about it, and he's uh, kind of like a bad person for how much I think about how much I hate this guy. <laughs> But then one day, uh, oh, and I used to really like, I used to like prank him a lot too. He spelled his name uh, with, a, with a K, his name was Eric with a K. And I would always go, and he was really proud of his like Viking heritage and that's why. So I would always go to his time card and cross out the K and put a C and be like, you spelled your own name wrong. You're ridiculous. That's, that's and he up, gets man. so mad about it. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I'm being a little mean. But then one day, another really annoying douchebag started working there. And they were like best buds. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy for him. Like, I was yeah. like, okay, I'm not a bad person. I wanted him to be happy. I just don't ever want to have to interact with him because yes. I hate everything he says and does. I hate you know? these people, but I'm glad that they found each other. <laughs> yes, I still want them to have happiness. I just don't want to be a part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So as as we're watching, um, while we're while we're just hanging out, uh, I like also to, to try and spice things up to with proving that common conversation starters can just cause people to become best friends. Sure. And so the one that I the ones that I've found have scoured the internet, uh, our unofficial sponsor of the show, ConversationStartersWorld.com. Please sponsor cool. me. Um, and uh, our first question is: If animals could talk, which animal would be the most annoying? Actually, uh, I'm scared. Okay, you're gonna Ooh, uh, 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 actually dogs probably. Right, big okay. fan, big fan of dogs, but they're very needy. I think their number one quality is that they can't talk. Uh, <laughs> it's what makes them, like, they're the best animal, in my opinion, right. as far as animals you could own. Yeah. Um, Actually, I follow this one dog on Instagram that can talk with like buttons. Have you seen this? No. It's a, there's this dog where it's its owner is a speech therapist that works with like nonverbal kids. Okay. So she just transferred all of what she knew over to her dog and made him this board with like 60 buttons. And he he's he's just memorized them. He knows which ones to press. I think it's a girl dog, but she uh she'll like go it's in that case it's not annoying you get like a little insight into into her brain and she'll just be like all she ever talks about is just like like you forgot to feed me and it's been like four minutes after feeding time they just like really like their schedule or she's like one time they the owners left um an outside toy inside they had like an inflatable raft that was like deflating inside and the dog kept going to the button thing and being like outside toy outside toy it was like yeah 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 it's called hunger for words is i think the instagram it's wild but so, it's so interesting when you think about that kind of shit right like like you think about an animal and it's just like yeah it's just like a fucking dog man like it just it likes walking pooping and eating like it's doesn't it's not that deep but then you no, give them that kind of thing and you're like oh no they have like all these thoughts and emotions and shit that we don't get because there's the dog yeah my uh my parents dog knows when it's time to get its ears cleaned he has the uh, ear infections really bad like constant ear infections so they have to clean his ears every day and they do it at 9 p.m uh and but then they have to switch it to 10 p.m when the clocks move ahead because uh the dog just knows he just knows exactly when it's time and they said sometimes they'll be going to go to bed and he won't follow them like up the stairs to their room and they'll have to go around the house and they'll be like i left a door open or one of the lights is still on like he knows he's just like there's stuff you still got to (laughs) do it's not bed yet yeah yeah they need everything to go the exact same same every single day That's they want crazy. no change whatsoever and i think that would get incredibly annoying yeah if the dog would be awful yeah uh hello you're um you're eating lunch four minutes after you did yesterday why are you doing that it is 12 4 p.m it is no longer lunch it's okay i love you but uh stop that just stop living that? with the most stop atypical the most type a person known to man like yes yeah yeah who also eats their own shit if they're like really 
<laughs> superior to you all the time. Yes. I think they'd be very needy. What's yeah. Are you done Do you think you could have that conversation with your dog though? Like, and like we're that where it's like, all like all dude, you you vomited yesterday and ate it. Now, like, now yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, if I'm eating my McDonald's today, like, chill out. Yeah, maybe. I could. uh God. Yeah. How would they handle an argument? Yeah. I think you could get pretty mad at the dog and they'd forget it pretty quickly. So that part would be nice. That you could like true. quash the argument real quick. Or do you learn or do you learn the true threshold for how much mean shit you can say to your pet? Because like I I'll be honest, I have a cat that I say the meanest shit known to man to, but like in a non aggressive way, because I understand like animals are more like tone based. So I'm just like, Oh you little fucker, you ah, you little smelly bitch. I hate you. I hate you. See it, but they might she might understand that. Your cat might understand that and you're uh, Yeah. They apparently they're thinking now that that at least dogs. Uh, we used to think that they knew like twenty words, and now they're thinking it's more like three or four hundred. Wow! Like it, uh, yeah. They can. They can. Mm. I wonder if you could teach animals like different languages. I wonder if if your dog is from Spain and you teach them all the commands in Spain, do they then speak Spanish when they can now magically talk? Oh, in this in this magical world. Well, yeah. If like, because you would need to use Spanish commands on that dog. Yeah. So I think so, yeah. I think so. Mm. And that'd be even more annoying to have a Spanish dog. Yeah, because you'd be like, Spanish. you can talk to me, but I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Can you to be imagine? super needy and you have to Google Translate it all day, that's tough. Imagine if, so magically one day yeah, animals can talk, break. but they all speak Latin. Being the kind of boss so there's like mm. 10 people, people on the things. face of the planet who are like, I yeah. took people Latin in university and therefore I can speak to your dog. Yes, yes. And you're like, okay, demo means people. Um, I'm, you got to give me a second. <laughs> yeah, I took this in grade nine. I can piece this together. I got this. Mm -hmm. Did your school have Latin when you were a kid? We, we got taught it. I think it was actually, it might have been like grade seven or eight. Okay. We did one semester of Latin. And a decent amount of it stuck with me. I remember, really? yeah, democracy, demo means people, crassy means rule. Okay. And uh, he said something like, ah, what's with all these crassy rules? Like, that's how he would make us remember it. He was one of those goofy guy teachers. He's actually great. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Peterson. Mr. Peterson, my man. If you're listening at home, we love you, Mr. Peterson. What a cool guy. Oh, good guy. Hopefully. Maybe, maybe he's Hell of a guy. Hopefully he's a good guy. Still, as far as I know, a good guy. Sick. Hell yeah. As far as I know, yeah. No, uh, he hasn't been caught up in any scandals yet. That's all you can ask for out of, right? your, out of your middle school teachers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh, true. It's Shit. just not the awful people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My sixth grade teacher was no good. No? My sixth grade teacher uh, befriended a lot of students Ugh. and would then be mean to a lot of the students he didn't like. He didn't like me. I remember that. Oh, okay. uh, I remember everybody was like, oh, Mr. Crane's the coolest. I don't care. His name's Darren Crane. Go fuck himself. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> He would be just like, he really just like played politics and was yeah. just like, he would have cool kids that could come do stuff with him and other kids that just couldn't. Ugh. And then he started uh, asking girls in the class to like babysit for him. And then girls would be like, I had a fun night with Mr. Crane yesterday. We were like, he came home uh, a little like later and the kids were asleep. So we went in the hot tub and we blah, blah, blah. I can't remember if he had like kids or just like a, I don't think he even had kids. He had like a cat that they would go watch. And I was like, oh, you're a sixth grader and you went in a hot tub with your teacher, huh? I'm only a sixth grader too. And I that know that's feels weird, weird to yeah. me. Yeah, Ugh. that's super weird. And some of those girls still won't admit that he was creepy. They're like, he yeah. was just a cool teacher. And you're like, okay, go look at a sixth grader right now. And and if she told you that she went in the hot tub with her teacher yesterday, yeah. you'd think that was great? You'd think that was a cool move? Yeah. So go, go in like a Sears catalog and find a sixth grader in a bathing suit. And then you go look at yourself in the fucking mirror, hour. brother. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Ugh. You're fucked, dog. <laughs> Fuck, dog. <laughs> yeah, man. I 100% this plot forgot this plot line where Jim had a girlfriend. Yeah, he's dating the purse sales lady for a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, it's Amy Adams too, hey? Eh? She's like yeah. super famous now. It's, that's the other crazy thing about watching some of these. It's like watching Freaks and Geeks and like the opposite yeah. shit where you see these like all star casts, but it was like 15 mm -hmm. years ago when no one cared. Yeah, yeah, they were all nobodies. This guy's a pretty big deal too. I can't remember his name. Rob something. Yeah. Rob Riggles. Yeah, Rob Rob Riggles or something like that. Rob yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to be engaged. Um, I think it's Isla Fisher actually. That's one of the two. There's two very similar looking redhead actresses. Oh, is that not Amy Adams? Oh no, I don't think it is. 
you don't want to ask I should know, but I can't. I can't tell. Man, I'm so bad with things. There's, there's yeah. like... I don't know if you've ever seen it on like Instagram and stuff where they have like the four actresses next to each other and it's like you can't convince me these aren't the same person. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's like that. Where it's like That's Christina right. Hendricks, Amy Adams, like. Not what I was looking for, but. And you're just like, I oh just no. <laughs> Christina Hendricks, I think most people can tell because of her ridiculous giant boobies. Yeah, those but, really. Uh, but, hey, but if you go here to here. Think about my first wife. Same hair. You're right. Same hair. <laughs> White lady I can't hair. deny. I cannot deny. <laughs> this is a real, uh, this one has a real snag in the Jim Pam. Look, he's going over and he finally realized he's going to go tell Pam how he feels. Fuck it. I got to tell you how I feel, Pammy. Uh-oh, who's on the mic? Oh, God. It's Roy. It's he's drunk. drunk. Roy. And he's just decided he's going to finalize the wedding date with his girl, Pam. Oh, Jim. I love the show, man. Yeah, the Jim Pam thing. So good. It's so every now and then they uh, they they get a little too obvious with it, but for the most part, like a lot of people like to like hyper analyze this. There's a lot of just everybody has an opinion. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a million people on Twitter that have this problem. It's like she's got a boyfriend. He's got to let her go. But you watch the show and you're like, there is a genuine connection. You get why he's still focused on it. He keeps being like, I'm trying to move on. I've got another girlfriend, but like, I see you every day and I can tell you like me too, but yeah. there's just this, it's this beautiful thing with Jim too, because the two main elements of his character are just, he has these things that don't exist once somebody says it or looks at it directly. Like, He's the leader of the office in almost every way yeah. until anybody like points out that he's being the leader right now. Yeah. Like he's in charge. And then he's like, as soon as that happens, everybody's like, yeah, he backs away and everybody's like, Jim's not the fucking boss of yeah. us. Like he has to play it simple. And like him and Pam are clearly, they have this like great chemistry. And then as soon as either somebody looks at them or Roy shows up or he says something that takes it a step too far and makes it too real, it like disappears. Yeah. It's uh you feel for him. You get really frustrated for him. You're yeah. like, nothing you have is fully real. He doesn't get to actually own any of his like two main qualities. They're very like, it's like a Buddhist principle. That's like, you can't, anything that's really intrinsic and inside of you, you try to grab it. It's gone. You have to just like have it and not look at it too directly. The Buddhist, the Buddhist philosophy of, of Jim from the office. Jimism, yeah. That's my religion. The Tao of Jim. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, that probably exists out there somewhere. People it uh, have to. I shouldn't speak as somebody who just tried to Buddhist <laughs> <laughs> add Buddhist mentality to the show, but people take their love for it a little too far. I think that's with anything, though. It's like we were talking about earlier. It's just people being like incredibly passionate about the things they like, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather you love something a ton than hate something a ton. That's right? true. I, I'm the same yeah. way. Where I'm like, I would rather you I would rather you be one of those people who psychoanalyzes the office, gets really weird about like Vampire Diaries or something, rather than just being like, you know, the Twilight movies aren't that good. Yeah. Like, no one wants yeah. to know that guy. Like, I actually, my personally, not a fan of Nickelback the band. Not a fan of Nickelback, if I can be honest with you guys. Yeah, and that's my whole thing, nothing else. That's my thing as a person. Yeah, uh -huh. and I listen to them all the time to make sure I don't like them. <laughs> Just to make sure. Do you know what they had? That's the worst thing, too, is when it's like, do you hear that Nickelback had a new song? And it's like, but Kyle, you hate Nickelback. It's like, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, I, I got to keep up the tabs on what they're doing. Find new ways to hate them. Yeah. Yeah. I had some friends that would that would get on board and be like, "Oh, I fucking hate Nickelback too." You know who's sick is Theory of a Dead Man. And you're like, okay, so I think you like that music, man. You can just admit you like it. Yeah, you don't have cool. to join in on the thing. The worst part is I'm I'm clowning on it, but uh, 100 percent that was me until I was a grown ass man. Like <laughs> even still, sometimes I catch myself doing it, and I'm like. Oh fuck! I am just awful. <laughs> just hating on the thing that's cool to hate. Yeah, I do that. I like. Yeah. There's that little. There's that kernel of just douchey hipster in me where it's like, Starbucks is overrated and overpriced. Actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I catch myself and I'm like, but it's cool if you like it. It's cool if you like it. It's just personal preference. Personal preference. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's too late. You already said it. You already brought the whole room down because you said it. I spent I spent so much of my life being an asshole about things that like now I'm an adult and I'm like I want everyone to enjoy the things they like. It's great that you like Harry Potter. I personally don't like it, but like it's great that you like it and shit. Yeah, uh, but just quickly, here's uh, seven reasons why I don't like it. And again, you can like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But 
kidding. None of that would have actually happened, first off. Okay, so number one, yeah. fake. So number one, magic <laughs> isn't real, okay? Fucking Jesus, can we start with that? Time travel, excuse me? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send you a couple links to some videos that break this down pretty pretty well. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. I've never. I'm honestly, I'm fine with you liking Harry Potter. I just want you to uh, look at the science of it. And then, like, if you've done your research and you still like it, that's fine. That's but, fine, man. Yeah. It comes back to exactly what you were saying, where it's like, it's like, I've explained my point so well, you're not allowed to like Harry Potter anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think critically. You've lost your mind. I did it. I completely changed your mind. And you're. A crazy person. That's internet fights to a T. Literally. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. Engaged, ain't married. married. Good shit, Mike. Man, I this episode is so good for exploring, ever. like, it's the first time I feel like that we really see Jim just like a vulnerable, hurt asshole. Like, he's just like, yeah. he's like, I'm such a bad Don't person. Worry, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And he, it's great too, because it's this great touching moment with him and Michael, where Michael kind of gives him some decent advice, like the one kind he could, where he's yeah. just saying like, even though all the signs are telling you to give up, don't give up, because I wouldn't. It was Amy Adams. Yes. Nice. We okay. Did. We know our shit. Somebody. But what's great is, now in this episode, we're under the other, man, they come quick, don't they? Yeah. Uh, now, I, it's, it's either this episode or the one after. Now, Michael's just the worst and won't stop bringing up the secret that Jim told him. Yeah. Like, he's really just teaching him, you should have never opened up to me because I'm going to abuse that trust. Yeah. And, and I'm going to get way too clingy and I'm going to tell everybody because I don't know how to keep a secret. It's yeah. great because I feel like in other in other sitcoms that you'd watch, like if you're watching like How Me Your Mother or something, like a moment like that happens and it carries on to the next episode, which is like good writing and all that. But then in The Office, it carries over, but in the worst way possible. Yeah, 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 like, it's always exactly. twisted to be like, but it was a bad thing to open up to this character. I like waking up mm -hmm, this film mm -hmm, Vegas. Exactly. And I don't know, I don't know how much they planned that ahead or if they're just like, okay, what would happen after we did this? He like opened up to him on the boat. There's no way Michael's going to be cool about that. Yeah. They can't, they can't just be buds now. It's one of those shows where I'm like, I would have loved to be in the writer's room for this show. Then how much really fun out. would that to have been smell, to like that? Well, think about like it. like the puzzle of how it's we're going to do it. It's good for yeah, and some moments I really can't imagine sitting down Today, and writing it. It comes off so organic. I guess there's enough the like improv happening, but yeah. Uh, man, yeah, I get when people like talk shit about this show. I get when people can't watch it because it's too uncomfortable. Sure. And I even get when people like there's I, there's things I've seen people pick apart. They telegraph the jokes sometimes and they're going for like documentary format and some things are just like, why would the camera be there or why? And it's like, I get that. But how how hard are you going to try to wreck a really good thing? Like, it's so much better than most shows. Still, this show stays good right up until season seven, even into season eight before it starts to get really bad. Are you are you mostly season, season eight and season nine? Season nine's pretty fucking bad. There's a moment where Daryl is, because uh, he's got a crush on that Val girl from the off yeah. from the warehouse, and uh, he's like kind of has a bit of a back and forth with her, and they're sort of they've never kissed, they've never admitted their feelings for each other. She has a boyfriend. Earlier in the episode, he has a bit of a confrontation with her boyfriend. And it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. And then like five minutes later, she walks upstairs while he's getting, they're doing family photos at the office. And she walks up to him and his daughter holds his hand and they get a family photo taken together. Yeah. <laughs> That's awful. Yeah. That's awful writing. Yeah. She's, they haven't They haven't gone out. They haven't kissed. They haven't even said, like, I like you. He said, like, if you were single, I would date you. Yeah. And then five minutes later, her boyfriend's probably still downstairs. <laughs> and she walks up and just holds his hand with his daughter. Yeah. That's an insane... They should both be like, this is fucked. Yeah. And in, in season four... Yeah, in season four, if they did do that, they'd be like, hold on, wait. Erase that picture. This is nuts. Like, yeah. They would not have just followed through with it. There is it, definitely a degradation of 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 the the I guess the reality of it, because I guess it makes sense, though. Right. Like you get to a point where where you can only do so much with the reality that they've made. Well, and again, and something. kudos to them to make it to like season seven and still they lost Michael. They brought in like five new characters and yeah. it was still like pretty funny. Some of the best yeah. moments. One of the intro yeah, bits was that. Uh, they get Stanley a birthday card that references his mustache. And then everyone's like, 
he doesn't have a mustache, does he? Does he have a mustache and nobody could remember if he does? And I couldn't remember. And I was like, I mean, that's not, that's great. That's and it's like, I, I love any, any comedy where there's no clear punchline. Like there's nothing political about it. There's nothing topical. There's nothing, it's so subjective. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it still stays very good, but it gets to a point where it's, uh, I always find a show starts to suck when it feels focus grouped, okay. when it feels like they got a bunch of people in the room or they, they looked at a bunch of Reddit threads and were like, all right, people like when Phyllis is a little bit weird and people like the Creed stuff. They started leaning into the Creed stuff a little too much. They started just like giving the people what they want. Creed uh, too instead much of just, yeah, everybody did. And it was, it was more hijinks than like just a good show. Yeah. They had their formula and they, yeah, it's like that thing. They looked at it too closely. Yeah. Forgot what made it so good. And we're just doing like an impression of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love, I, I, I hate to interrupt an excellent episode of a good TV show, but uh, it's time for my favorite part of the show. Okay. No, it's time for the lightning round. Yeah, I am fussy. Are we pausing? Should we just should we, we gonna, we're gonna exit out? Pause real fast. That's okay. We okay. did a full episode. Anyway. We did. We got there. I'm gonna get one minute on a timer, and okay. I am gonna ask you this or that questions. Okay. As many as I can in the time allotted. Oh, I always freeze up at stuff like this. Okay, let's try it. Now we got a lot of a lot of these questions are very easy. I don't want you to stress. I don't want you to get pressed at all. Some of them are a little hard. I do that because I like fucking with people. Sure, sure, sure. So, I have my one minute on the timer. I have, uh, okay. I have my my score tallying pen and paper. Okay. Kyle, if you're ready, I am ready. I'm ready. Okay. In three, two, one. Cookies or cake? Uh, cheesecake. Cake, cheesecake. There we go. Cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. Uh, computer games or video game or console games? Console games. Uh, pop music or rock music? Rock music. Stuffed animals or dolls? Uh, stuffed animals. Pancakes or waffles? Oh, God, neither. I guess waffles. There we go. Hot chocolate or coffee? Uh, hot chocolate, because it doesn't make me sick. Uh, coffee makes you sick? We'll get back to this. It makes me poo-poo. Uh, <laughs> uh, evening, uh, morning or evening? Ooh, evening. Uh, text message or call? Uh, call, actually. Nice. Uh, libraries or museums? <laughs> museums. Uh, French or Spanish? Spanish, I guess. Okay. Uh, summer or winter? Oh, summer. There we go. Uh, theater or cinema? Ah, uh, cinema. There we go. I'm dumb guy. Uncultured. Uncultured swine we're dealing so with So uncultured. <laughs> so, okay, wait. You said, you said that coffee makes you sick. Does it just make you, like, shit a brick? Oh, not a brick. What's the exact opposite, the opposite of a of brick? That, right? But that's what coffee, <laughs> like coffee's supposed to do that. I don't think that's making you sick. It's just, well, that's what coffee do, man. Well, uh, that's bad. That I don't awful? like that it do that. I yeah, know, it's, that the there's worst? people that it doesn't do that for, but yeah, they say it just really stimulates your bowels and it just well, yeah, pushes everything out before it's ready. So it's whatever relaxing. nutrients you were going to get from your breakfast, not anymore. It's coming out, just chewed up, still looking like food. <laughs> disgusting i uh and then it also if you have more than one cup your just head feels nuts oh man i went off coffee for like two months over this quarantine and then i just as soon as i need to to like i had like any responsibilities come back mm -hmm. i was like fuck i gotta do it again i'm just starting every day with a stomach ache and uh three bathroom trips and it sucks are you an energy drinks kind of guy though are you a caffeine guy at all or are you just like a? uh it's coffee if it's gonna be anything i i Red Bull's a little too much. Yeah. I find it either doesn't work or it makes me feel terrible. I've never had a Red Bull and been like, perfect. Yeah. Sometimes those five-hour energies sort of work for me. Okay. Um, but I know that's not great for you. No, not even at all. It's like a fucking shot of death, dude. Yeah, I saw the, I saw the like, information on the box one time. The little bottle doesn't have it, but the thing it's in. Yeah. I guess that's how they get around it. They're yeah. like... This is at the counter. They're never going to read this. Yeah. And it, uh, it gives you... The reason you have all that energy is it gives you... 12,000% of your daily recommended dose of vitamin B12. That's yeah. the, where the energy is coming from. Yeah. Like, well, that cannot be good. <laughs> can't for you. possibly There's be good. No for you. way. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's overwhelming your blood with a certain vitamin. I'm sure it's just that your body thinks you're dying. So you just have this <laughs> surge of just like, it's like yeah, you're just thing. like running away from a is. tiger for five hours. <laughs> for five hours. <laughs> 
I am going to tabulate the score that we got here while I do that. Tell me about uh, Tailgate Talent Show. Yeah, so Tailgate Talent Show is a um, the TV show on Eastling TV. I'm like the, I guess like the host star. There's not really like there's there's uh, judges, but they kind of change every episode. There's talent, but it sort of changed. So I'm really the only like you're the constant, constant. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I write some of it. It's like a collaborative thing, but a lot of a lot of my parts I write, and then I work with a producer. Uh, Dean Rainey. Uh, he's got a company called Rainey Media out of uh, Delhi, Ontario, near like Simcoe. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, we go into like rural Ontario. The premise is just that like uh, it's rural, it's a talent show. It's the kind of people that wouldn't be on like a Toronto based type of thing. It's okay. like hidden talents, people that maybe like are really well known and respected in their little town, but haven't gotten a chance to like, you know, bust out of their scene. So mm-hmm. they get a little bit of like, Coverage. We do kind of like fun features. We try to do some like Conan man on the street style. Okay. There's always sort of some, there's always like a running bit for every episode. And I'm kind of going around the town finding there's an episode where we like crash somebody's like backyard party. Uh, and there was an episode where I, uh, I tried roller derby. Uh, that one turned out really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's cool. So we're doing season two now. We did the whole, we did six episodes last year. Weren't sure if we we're going to get to do it again with everything, but now we uh, we found a way. We're doing it totally differently, where we're just uh, doing everything. We're going to people instead of everyone coming to one place. Right. But uh, yeah, we're making it work. We filmed oh, uh, a couple of the features for the first things, doing the rest in a couple of weeks, and then it should come out in like probably September, October, sometime. Mm-hmm. On uh, East Link TV. East Link TV. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that actually sounds sick. I love that. It's a very, I feel like it's a very, uh, this feels kind of weird and douchey to say, it's a very broadcasting student, I feel like, idea. Like, I feel like I had that idea, and we've all had that kind of idea where, like, I want to do, like, a like a show like that that's got a bit in it, and, like, there's power sure. involved, showcasing yeah. people. Yeah, it's fun. It leaves just enough room for me to sort of uh, fuck around with, kind of, but it's, yeah. uh, we're always kind of trying to find the balance. I mean, absolutely every shoot, there's a couple of, not fights, but definitely like probably eight disagreements yeah. where, where we both have a very different idea and there's either not time for something or there's, if it was up to me, we'd cut so much of all of the features. We'd go down to somebody's business. They'd let us like hang out with them for three hours and I would cut it down to a minute and a half. Cause I want all the funny stuff in there. Yeah. But uh, he's just like, no, we got it. These people were really cool to us. They like, let us do that with them all day. We got to like, we got to do the show thing. part of the show. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> But uh, that get, like he is from the producer is from that area, so okay. he really like he knows a lot of these people. He knows like what's worth showing, kind of, and like yeah. what's cool about those areas. It feels good. I do like it because I'm from a small town too, and I've always kind of been like, there's a lack of you know polish maybe mm-hmm. with some of these people. But that's what I like about them. I don't like somebody who's like so. A lot of Toronto comics start out so presentable already and so like they don't have any material but they got all the stage presence and their hair looks great yeah and they got all of this like white teeth how you doing let's handshake kind of gusto and you're like yeah but like what's show me who you are yeah where's the where's the where's the you in it the whole person and Mm -hmm. there's there's a ton of that out there and i could give a shit about the like i don't even like none of my favorite comedians or anything are polished and if they are they just happen to be i like them despite that i want somebody who's just being like their whole self up there there's being a lot of like raw, showcasing unedited, like, yeah, the, man. <laughs> yeah 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 yes but like the three-person you know folk band version of that <laughs> <laughs> the dixie chicks version of it not the confederate flag version. Yes. i'm with you yeah 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 exactly I, I exactly mm-hmm. we have tabulated our score i want to thank you so much for being on the show uh, the way we do it Thank is we, we measure your answers with the answer I've already prepared to see kind of where we're at in terms of becoming best friends. And Kyle, I am happy to report to you that you scored, I love the drum roll, 9 out of 13, which good. is a good score. That's a good score. Yeah, it sounds not bad. Okay. What does it say for us? I To me, that says that we've just become best friends. That's what it says to me. But I'm a best little biased. Friends. I think we've always become, I, I at the end of the episode, I always think we've become best friends. There's never been an episode where you guys just both kind of went your separate ways. Just at the end of it, I'm like, man, I fucking, I hate you. All right, well, whatever, end of the episode. 
That's okay, what that hasn't happened yet. Okay. That's when I'll know I peaked. <laughs> is when yeah, I yeah, find yeah. somewhere I'm just like, fuck you, and I end the show and po- post it anyway. Yes. <laughs> That's when you do the sequel of the show, and it's it's uh, let's, hate each you know, other. let's become worst enemies. Let's become worst enemies. That's a good. That's the that's that's the name of the Let's Play channel that I eventually make, where we yes. exclusively play Monopoly. Has anybody gotten a thirteen? Has anyone gotten a thirteen? No one has gotten a perfect score yet. Everyone answers a different amount of questions because just depending on how fast people can get through them. But no one's gotten a perfect score. I'll tell you, you were close. We got to. Uh, it wasn't until coffee that we got one that we disagreed on. Because I, I am an animal. I drink like three cups of coffee a day. Mm. Well, I, I was on the fence about that because I do drink a lot of coffee. Mm-hmm. And I never drink hot chocolate. But I just had coffee an hour ago. And I just looked over at my like coffee thing. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> really? I hate you. I need Yeah, we're in bad terms right now. If you asked me either a few hours ago or in a few hours, it might have been a different answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank you so much for becoming my new best friend. I want to thank... All of my best friends out there listening at home, however you listen to it, we are on Spotify, and we're trying to get on uh, Apple Play and Google Play right now. We're going to, we're, uh, it's all a fucking process. Uh, but we are on YouTube, so make sure you like, share, subscribe, all those good algorithm things. Post in the comments below if you have any questions you'd like to get on the show. You can also reach me on all of my social medias, at Old King Cake. The brand is strong. Kyle, I want to give you this time. Shout out whatever you want to shout out. Give us your, your social medias, where people can find you on the internet, and what you're up to. Uh, okay, come watch me do comedy when that starts up again. Uh, uh, add me on Facebook. It's not Boob Tit Phillips anymore. It's just Kyle Berg Stresser. Uh, look for the guy that looks like me. There's yeah. a lot of us. Uh, there's a lot of Berg Stressers out there, I feel like, probably. There are, actually. Wait, there's really? a ton. Oh, there's like there's like 70 Kyle Berg Stressers on Facebook. That's I was blown insane. away, too. Yes. Uh, I, I've never gotten my just full name as like a Google thing as a username. It's always taken. Uh, so it's at Kyle underscore Bergstresser on Instagram. Uh, it's at Kyle Bergstresser on Twitter. No R at the end. Cause it's uh, yeah, very cool. And uh, God, yeah, shit. I'm do- if you live in Kitchener, Waterloo, I'm doing a show at a park there that you've maybe heard about. It's Ben McKay's show. I'm doing that on August 14th. <laughs> if this is, if this comes out before then, that's all I got right now. <laughs> So make sure you tune into his social media channel so you can know anytime that Kyle is doing anything. I want to thank you so much. You've been such a you've been such a pal. I want to thank uh, Isabel Wing for the intro to our podcast. Let's be best friends, and Seth Feldman for the outro. That's all the time we have for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that your mom was your best friend at one point, so give her a call, and we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.